Did you ever look at something that you thought you'd seen a million times and then look a little bit closer and go, but never one just like that? Me too. Let's call out the elephant in the room. What is going on with this? And that's exactly what I thought when I was going through my reverb feed in 2020. You know, right when COVID started. Uh, what were we all doing? We were at home looking at guitars. So many people were buying guitars and recording gear. You couldn't even get it at that point because everybody was home. And what did they want to do? They wanted to try a new instrument and, and buy things. And we were all depressed because we couldn't go out. So what was I doing? I was on reverb going, huh, maybe the void that I need to fill inside my heart can be satiated by a beautiful, beautiful, Les Paul guitar. As I've said in many videos before, I don't go on to the internet or Reverb or eBay specifically going, I need a Les Paul, I need a Paul Reed Smith, I need a Fender. I just go on and go, where's the deals? What's out there? I passed this thing. It was, I want to say $3,000 or something, which at the time, you know, I was like, I don't want to spend that kind of money. You've piqued my interest. You know, it's like when you go on the internet and you're like looking like, nope, 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 yes! That is how I felt. The first thing is this color. I've never seen a Les Paul quite like it. I mean, there's a million different bursts. You know, Sienna burst, Mojave burst, desert burst, iced tea burst, honey burst. I hadn't seen one quite like this one. And then of course, I like weird. I am a little bit weird. So if I play a Fender Strat or if I play a Paul Reed Smith or I play a Les Paul, I like the ones that are just a little bit different, just like me. So when I saw this, I said, oh, well, that looks very, very, very classic, but there's this weird chromey thing where normally you would have a stop tailpiece. There's this weird mass of chrome sitting right there. And I'm like, well, I know how this one works. The way that it was advertised is it's the Gibson Les Paul modern prototype, custom shop modern. And I say custom shop modern because Gibson loves to name multiple things the same thing. And there's the modern, which is the weird shaped one. And there's the Gibson modern, which has almost like a Pelham blue color, mother of pearl inlays, and it's beautiful. But it's not this guitar. Maybe six months ago, when I realized I saw a Gibson Les Paul Modern, but it was a custom shop Modern, and it was this guitar. Oh. So I didn't know what this guitar was actually the prototype of until recently. So they made a new thing to enforce the back of the headstock called the Apex Headstock. And if you look at this, by comparison to anything that you'll see with an Apex Headstock, you'll go, oh, well that doesn't look the same. This is the first one. I just want that Les Paul in my life. And it just kept calling me in this color, this orangey red beautifulness and this crazy chrome bridge, which I couldn't decide if I loved or hated. So I start messaging the guy. Turns out he worked at Gibson and was a super, super cool dude and got this guitar at a Gibson company auction. I did what any of you should do if you find out the history of your guitar from someone that knows. Write it down and put it in the case, which by the way, off screen is a 59 reissue Lifton case that this thing came in. A beautiful case, mind you. If anyone had any question if it's really Gibson, because I think I had posted a, a reel or something about this and people are like, that's not real. No, it comes with all the hang tags and everything, including this is the prototype number one of the Gibson Les Paul Modern from the custom shop book. Whether you love it or hate it, you've never seen anything like it, right? So let me read to you what my, my buddy at Gibson told me about this guitar. It says, the build is believed to be 2015, maybe 2016. It's attributed to Matt Klein. Matt is the dude that made a bunch of guitars for Billy Gibbons, like the fuzzy ones for ZZ Top. That's Matt Klein. He's made all kinds of custom models and beautiful guitars for Gibson for years and years and years, and he's a legend. You're telling me that Matt Klein handmade this guitar one of one, and that this is a very early rough iteration that never made it to production of the Apex headstock. Let's address the elephant in the room. What's up with this bridge? What was going through their heads? What's the purpose of this? What is it? The bridge was custom built to make the body more resonant 
and the string change easier. It has all of the benefits of a wrap tail and most of the benefits of a stop tail. Despite them loving it in R&D, they determined it too expensive for manufacture. Hold up. So you're telling me that they only made one of these? Thought it was awesome, but then they're like, there's just way too much going on here. We couldn't possibly make this and even put it on a $7,000 custom shop guitar. Now I'm interested. You see that space, guys? It's floating. It's only touching the body with those two pegs. So basically, what this does is it makes the strings, they go in underneath here. There's a piece of brass in here, like a huge metal mass. If you look at this, you have the tailpiece and the bridge right here. So you have four holes into the body. This only has two. And where people are always talking about, do I wrap my strings around like Zach Wild, where I put them around the tailpiece? You kind of have to, because what it does is, if you take this off, you gotta string them all at once, because they say it's supposed to be easier to string. It is not easier to string. Without doing it all at the same time, you kind of have to push this to come back around over here. But I get the idea. There's something about having a huge mass of metal that brings out the sustain. You know, like, oh, I can hear the sustain from this. It is also a non-weight relieved model. It's probably about eight and a half, nine pounds. It just goes to show that they can find really light wood. And as much as people love that dense thing, you know, like the Adam Jones 37 pounds and let's break our back during a gig. Cryogenically treated frets, like 59 fretless wonders. So basically Les Paul liked really, really flat, small frets because he didn't use a lot of vibrato. Back in 2015, 16-ish, they did a whole thing at Gibson where all the higher end guitars had cryogenically treated frets. And the idea was it's gonna last longer than you without ever having any dents in it, which is great because if you have a fretless wonder, if you ever picked up some of those vintage Les Pauls, it's literally like playing a fretless guitar because if you burn down these frets, there's almost nothing left. So the fact that these will be the same way in 200 years is kind of rad, but they don't do it anymore because no one found any value in it because I guess in four or five years, you can't really figure out the value of cryogenic frets. You kind of have to live to like another millennium or something. I will reiterate, it's floating. It's floating, guys. It's, it's wild. And it's supposed to cause the guitar to be way more resonant, which... It's loud, it's spanky. It really does have a lot of resonance. I was immediately sold on this bridge. I didn't understand it. But as soon as I plugged it in, as soon as I played it, I'm like, I, I believe. The last thing I found out about this guitar is, is that this is a custom color. It's very close to the bangle burst. There's a lot of bursts, but this is, this is unlike any of the other ones. And it has a, a, a really beautiful top. You say bangle burst, but again, it, it really does look like a tiger. Matt Klein built this guitar. So like, I'm not surprised that, that this guitar plays and feels absolutely like the best Les Paul I've ever played because it's, Matt Klein, a master builder, a guy who's built for all kinds of celebrities and been at Gibson since the dawn of time. It's, you know, their flagship. It's a 59, just modded ever so slightly. Lastly, we have the pickups, which are 57s. I just think that they're kind of a magic sounding pickup for me. So I'm glad that's what's in here. Let's check it out. a snappy jangleness to it that I, I dig. And one of the things that my buddy said was he thought it might be a 57 plus, I haven't checked. I'm gonna say I think it might be a 57 plus because that's a little bit wilder and hotter sounding, which you can never go too hot. I'm gonna use a little Boss RV3 delay on my Angle Gigmaster 30, which is all I'm using.
sounds pretty awesome to me. Let's go put on some distortion. That's got a real cool kind of honk to it. All right, rhythm. This thing rocks. This thing absolutely rocks. It feels so good. I have to imagine that if you're gonna spend a crazy amount on some sort of master built Les Paul, that this is how it should feel like. So I gotta say thanks to my friend at Gibson who hooked me up with this guitar. And if you guys wondered how resonant the bridge was and if it works, It works. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already?